Edison format is notorious for allowing a wide variety of decks to shine. Even decks that look like absolute hog water on paper are able to pop off given the right scenarios and sneak in wins against the more competent meta strategies. In this series, I will profile and match up the jankiest decks imaginable against the meta decks of the time and see if they really can be the best of the worst. Hello guys, and welcome back to another episode of Best of the Worst. Today we're covering a deck that definitely represents the worst side of that title, Archfiends. Archfiends were one of the first archetypes to ever be in Yu-Gi-Oh! So early, in fact, cards that mention them didn't even have quotation marks around their archetype name. Surprisingly, even though most of the monsters in this archetype are bad, they have a few interesting tools to work with, like an archetypal Snatch Steel and Monster Reborn. That makes them just, you know, slightly playable. On the other hand, the life points they'll be draining from you will make you want them dead by the end of a long game, which is not a good sign. Despite that, Archfiends hold a special place in my heart due to their interesting art and designs and their ability to literally kill you if you're not fast enough in killing your opponent. So first off, we have three Archfiend Generals. This card can be discarded to grab Pandemonium, literally the worst field spell I've ever seen. This card is actually garbage. First of all, it allows you to not pay the life point cost that some of the Archfiends require of you. But, you know, don't worry, you can still pay it if you want to. Also, I like how it implies that there will be a world where there would be an Archfiend mirror match. You know, I'd love to live in that world, I really would. Anyway, its second effect is a little better considering it gives you extra card advantage instead of mitigating a cost already attached to these overpriced monsters. It gets you an Archfiend to your hand of a lower level when one is destroyed on the field. Which, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty... Oh, oh wait. Sorry. Yeah, it's just by card effect. Battle doesn't count. That's interesting since half of them have targeting protection. Anyway, back to the monsters. We have one Desrook Archfiend, which can pick, pitch itself if Terra King is destroyed to summon him back. Just Terra King, that's it. And he's a level 3, so he can be added on the off chance one of your Archfiends are destroyed by a card effect. Then we have one Gores, and three Infernal Queen, which seems weak at first, but can pump up an Archfiend up by a thousand attack each standby phase, including herself. So basically she turns into a 1900 beater on your opponent's turn. Then we have three Mist Archfiend, which can normal itself even though it's a level 5, but it gets destroyed during the end phase, and you do take a thousand damage. As if we needed more self burn effects. The good thing about this card is, is that it does trigger Pandemonium, allowing you to add any level 4 Archfiend to your hand, which is basically all of them. Then we have 3 Shadow Knight Archfiend, which is just a 2000 beater that also has any battle damage it inflicts onto your opponent. You know, we really didn't need that to add for balance, but oh well. Then we have 3 Terra King Archfiend, which can only be summoned if you control another Archfiend. Despite this restriction, he's probably the best Archfiend because he negates any effect of a monster that he destroys, which is good for punishing floaters. We have one Tragodia, and then three Vanilla Archfiend Soldier. Yes, we're playing a Vanilla. That's how desperate we are for playable cards. Then we have an Alert of Darkness, Brain Control, and the best card in the deck, Falling Down. This equip spell is basically Snatch Steel if you control an Archfiend monster, and burns you for 800 each standby phase, and this effect won't be mitigated by Pandemonium. It's good for going for a surprise push for damage, but it can be easily destroyed with any spell trap removal, or just if your opponent destroys one of your other Archfiend cards. Despite that, it's prob still probably the best card in the deck. That's why we're running two Hidden Armory to search for it. This, the mill this card also accomplishes is sometimes very useful for getting Archfiends engraved to summon off of Archfiends Roar, which is basically a monster reborn for the Archfiends, but they are destroyed during the end phase of the turn. That also does trigger Pandemonium, which is pretty good. We also have some back row removal, Heavy Storm, MST, two Bottomless Trap Hole, two Dust Tornado, one Mirror Force, and one Skill Drain. 
In the side, we have three Skull Archfiend of Lightning, which is basically just a tribute summon for the Archfiend archetype. Um, we have Giant Trunade, Nobleman of Crossout, Dimensional Prison, an Extra Dust Tornado, Light Imprisoning Mirror, another Skill Drain, and Starlight Road. Then for the extra deck, we have just a bunch of synchros that you probably won't even summon, and I didn't even finish it off, so um, you can probably add, I don't know, let's just add another Cataster. There we go. You're not going to summon these, so whatever. Alright, so let's get to the replay. Alright, so let me preface this with the... Alright. So let me preface this with the... So let me preface this with the fact that this is pretty much the only good game I wanted. All the others were just disconnections. Uh, that's when you know this deck is kind of maybe a little bit slightly bad. So my opening hand is pretty good. Um, you definitely want a lot of Arch Fiends in your opening hand. Um, and I do get another one here. So I do summon the Soldier and set the Roar. I'm passed. And my opponent just sets a back row in response. I summon Turret King Arch Fiend and go in for, for damage here with both of my monsters, and then set my MST. On his turn, he's able to activate Lightning Vortex, which is able to get him a malicious injury. And then he summons a Deep Sea Diva, summoning another one, and then summoning his malicious from deck in order to summon Stardust Dragon before attacking indirectly with his monster. Um, I summon Shadow Knight Archfiend here and attack his Deep Sea Diva and pass, and he just attacks into my Shadow Knight. And I take 500 here, but I'm able to drop the Trag on him and activate Allure of Darkness, banishing the Mist Archfiend from my hand and setting the Rook, as well as Skill Drain. So he destroys my Gregodia and then activates Gold Sarcophagus. Revealing Miracle Fusion, which, uh-oh, better finish this quickly. I do draw Falling Down, which is the best card in the deck, um, and force out his Stardust Dragon here with the MST, um, and try to attack in, but he does have the Threatening Warfare. But that's good because we're getting his backer out of the way for one big push. He attacks my Rook, which is honestly the best target here, because I'm able to go for Falling Down and steal his start the Dragon before trying to attack him for gain. But he does have the return from the different dimension, which he's able to summon his Militias back from his Banished Zone. However, I still have my Roar, which I'm able to activate and special summon the Terra King back to the field and destroys Malicious before going in for game. So yeah, um, this deck is not very good because people can literally just stall with set monsters or monsters greater than 1900 defense and eventually you'll lose because you'll run out of life points due to the maintenance cons. But at least they can surprise people sometimes with falling down and sneak games against um opponents like this so uh yeah it's really good guys um yeah okay what am i saying this deck sucks okay bye